Okay, so we're recording a Rhino model to introduce how to turn on the sun and some basic precepts of lighting. We're going to take about 15 minutes to do this, um, maybe less. So first of all, to turn on the sun, the command is sun. And that's pretty nice. So if you just do the command sun, you'll get this dialog box. Um, there's a bunch of other pieces that are locked to the sun. So there's environments. We are not going to get into environments. Um, don't be swayed by environments yet, um, my young friends. Please stay away from those. There is uh, these lights, and sun and skylight are always default turned on. And then here is here is the sun option. Before you go ahead and build a sun, you need to build the project that you're working on. Since we're using a row house, I'm just going to you know carefully do a row house here, and I'm actually going to just reflect by deleting out just a few of these. Just what our row house situation looks like because there's a couple of missing teeth on the block. So I'm just gonna have that. It'll help us see the shadows. I've also put a little bit of space between them. Now we're in a wireframe view right now. So I'm gonna go to a shaded view and just do a little vertical control here. So you can see the objects. We've got kind of a dummy of a road sitting in here right now. This is a very low key model. And if we turn on the rendered view, we'll get this kind of clay looking model. And the lighting that we're seeing right now is a diffuse sunlight type of lighting. Um, by turning on the sun though, we can actually get some control. So first we're gonna turn the sun on. And when we turn it on, we can control the direction that it's shining by moving this around. And you'll see it update after a little bit of uh, calculating. But even more valuable is to tell it where it's located. And you can do that by clicking. Um, but even better, you can do that by writing it in, in here. So if we search Philadelphia, we can actually get our latitude and longitude. And it'll locate us right to that spot. I'm going to just make this window a little bit bigger so we can see some of the details. And this is really nice. So uh, we can set it to. We can actually set it to now. And uh, let me see, we're filling this video at six o'clock. So there we go. And I can actually look out my Western facing window and I can see that the sun is just about, just about going down. And you can see here, we're actually kind of in twilight. Since we're still in daylight savings, it's actually solar five o'clock right now. And uh, so the sun is just, not quite setting. And that's where we're at. And actually, you can see that sunset today is right around 626. Remember, this does not have daylight savings. So if we do that, there we go. There we go. Um, and you can see why they call it the golden hour, because you get these really kind of amber hues. And the thing that I do like about this is that it'll show you this, these images and it'll show you uh, kind of the goldish hues that you'll get during sunset. Um, one of the other things that I like is that as this goes throughout the year, you can see that, guess what? In the July, the days are longer. In December, the days are shorter. And you can get a feel for that. You can also get a feel for why it's so darn hot in July. Look at the hours of full on sunlight. And then when we go to December, you'll see that twilight actually gets longer too because the sun is lower in the sky. Uh, and if you don't believe me, check this out. Let's just look at solar noon. You can see that the angle of the sun during the solstice is relatively low. And then if you look up here, this is basically a heliodon. So if you go to seed, we actually have a mechanical heliodon. This is a heliodon for your own models and self right here which is really great. So let's just set the sun at like a good angle. I'm gonna say like five o'clock in August, September, August, there we go. So that'll show us the intensity of the sun at the location. The other important thing here is that we can tell it which direction is north. All right, so by cranking this to the Y axis, I'm gonna say make the Y axis north. If I move this any other direction, it changes the direction that north is right here. So if you build your project and north is actually a different direction, like it's to the right, you're gonna to need to crank it over here. You can do this visually on this dial or you can do it over here. You can also grab just about any of these and move them around. So 
here's the project north. Um, for those of you that are working in Philadelphia, you'll know that the street grid is actually 12 degrees off of north. So it's actually about there. Oh, hang on. There we go. That did not work. There we go. Close-ish enough. So yeah, that way. Better, better, OK. All right, so we've got the sun turned on. Now, this can be really helpful. But if we're trying to get more lighting going on than just the sun, the sun's going to obliterate any other effect of any other light, just like it will when you're existing during the daytime. I can put my porch light on right now. There's not going to be a noticeable difference. Um, so besides the sun, there's also lighting, which is over here. So we can turn the sun. We can tell the sun to turn off by clicking this light bulb and turning it off. And we'll just use this skylight. And the skylight will have its own intensity and color. But we can add other lights as well. So you can add lights by adding them here. Uh, so there's a little plus sign, and you can say point light, spotlight, directional light, linear light, rectangular light. Um, but there's also a option. Um, my browser is a little messed up, but there's light there. You guys should have a lighting tab that's located up here as well. Um, and of course, you can always just type in lights, and it'll bring up this tab. All right, so let's just look at the types of lights. A point light is exactly what it says it is. And it's going to be a little bit easier if I actually turn off all of the lights. And when you turn off all the lights, it just kind of has this de facto sun setting. So let's put a light, and I'm going to snap it to the edge right there. So there's a point light. And a point light is it has no width, no depth, no thickness. It's just a point that is, that is blasting out light. Um, before I get any further, I'm going to put the lights all on a lights layer. And I'm going to name that double zero, so it's always at the top. And I'm going to make it a ridiculous uh, chartreuse color right there. And I'm going to double click to make that the current layer. So there's my point light. And as soon as I put one light in, you can see that it's it's there. You can also see why it was so important for me to have a ground, because the ground accepts shadows. And the rest of this model that doesn't really have a ground doesn't really accept shadows that well. Let's go back in. So here's my unnamed point light. I can do different stuff with it now. I can turn the, the intensity down. So I can make it you know, an intensity of 30. And you can see that happen live in the model. I can also give it a color. And a lot of lights have a temperature color. So like street lights, uh, especially in my section of Philadelphia, have a kind of yellowish tone to them. So you can actually set that up. You can add as many lights as you want. I'd suggest to not go super crazy and be very strategic about where you put your lights. And there's lights for effects, and there's lights for ambiance, and there's lights to get your model to show up correctly. So you can see in this point light, this point light is on the facade of this building, so it lights none of these facades. This is a good time to have construction lines. So right now, I'm going to put this spotlight. I'm going to add it right here. Unselect, spotlight, add a spotlight. Spotlight. All right, so it's, I'm going to set up this cone, and it's going to be directional. It's going to ask me where to start building it from. And this is why it's really helpful to have construction lines, because right now I'm forced to click and, and click it to the buildings that I'm operating. So right now, it's pointed at that building. And I can say, no, I actually want to point it at these buildings. I'm going to move it away. It's trying to stick to all of these different pieces. So now I've got that light, and I'm setting the cone of the light, so how wide it is and how intense it is. But it's not really doing a great job. You can see here's where the cone of the light is showing up. So let's go back to the lights command. Let's turn off that light and just look at the this guy itself right here. All right. Now, very frustrating because I can't see the light. 
Let's go back to wireframe model and you can see there's my light bulb right there. So I might actually choose to model it where I have this view as a rendered view and then these views where I'm controlling it one piece at a time. So I can move this over, move it up, maybe grab the whole thing. I want to notice that this is a more complex light than a pin light. A pin light is just emulating light along one plane, whereas this is doing this actually is a light with a direction. And you can see that when I select the light, I can move the entire light along with the direction that it's going, or I can move its source. So now I've selected the source and I'm telling it that it's gonna, it's going to point down. And I can select its target and I can say what it needs to point down at. And you can see that I'm getting a very directed cone and lastly, I want to show you that in this cone, there's actually two circles. So this is the hot spot of the light, which is something I talk to you guys a lot about when we talk about taking photographs of models. So every light has a hot spot and you can actually calibrate that hot spot to be the entire thing, like it's a follow spot or like it's a single lamp, like with an incandescent bulb. And then this is the drop off area and I can make that bigger. And the wider those are across from each other, the more diffuse that is and the closer they are together, the more definition there is amongst them and the more it drops off. Also, the closer light is, the more the intensity of that light. The further away the shadow falls, you can see that the further away the shadow gets, the more diffuse the shadow gets as well. I just wanna introduce you guys to, there's two more lighting types to introduce you to. So we're going to say that's OK. All right, and then we're going to grab out the lighting command here. Yoink, and grab him out. Not that one. Come on, son. Um, there's two more lights. There is a linear light. And a linear light is basically a fluorescent light bulb of unlimited length. And you'll see that as that linear light bulb moves into a streetscape, it'll light that entire area up in a linear way. And then there's another one, which is called a rectangular light right there. And a rectangular light is kind of like, almost like an LED panel and it's as big as you wanna make it. So if we make that panel, zoom in on this screen right here and we snap it from here to here to across here. It's going to light up pointing straight down and straight up. Different lights can be used for different reasons and you can always change an angle light so you can grab that linear light, move it around, turn it on, turn it off so it can turn that linear light off. Let's just turn off all the lights except for the linear light. So you can see there's the linear light going down the street. There's the spotlight and then here's the rectangular light. Now, an interesting thing happens, and this is why you want to do lighting with construction lines and not by snapping to objects. So from what we know about light, there is a solid object between this light. So why is it casting a light on all of these spaces, the other row houses? And the reason is, if I pull this just slightly to the right, it should stop doing that. Nope, it's not gonna. Because we snap to this object and these objects don't have a thickness and the light doesn't have a thickness, it's actually shining through the object. And what we're getting is a really kind of difficult error to deal with right now. If I move it out beyond these objects and I connected it to construction lines, if I made it slightly smaller, slightly smaller, then I can put it in between here and it won't be picking up the light quite as much. Also, if I put an object so that it's blocking it, it won't, it'll start casting a shadow onto those objects. So as I drop this down, oh, nope. Yeah, the rectangular light is doing, it's having a what's called a clipping issue, which is it's actually shining through the object. Shadows are not getting cast onto these objects. Um, last thing I wanna show you guys as I rip this lighting out here is that you can give color to all of these. And this is really important because light is actually a blend of all of the colors. And so when I'm starting to do a lighting scene, if everything's at 100, you can see that it's all blown out and there's no definition. Actually, I want these at like slightly different ones. I'm going to put this at 20. I'm going to put this at like 15. 
And I'm going to do layers of cool and dark light, cool and warm light rather. So eventually you're going to want to have them as like tones of yellow and hues of blue. But when I'm setting up lights to differentiate which light is doing what, I usually make them ridiculous colors. So it's more like, it looks more like a disco party. And this is what I would like for you guys to have for class on Monday is I would like you to take your row house model with your detail, get rid of the excessive or extreme level of detail, get rid of the excessive or extremely large bits. And I would like you to introduce six different lights with six different colors. And that way you can see how the different lights are gonna interact with each other, the different kind of shadows that we're having. And then in class on Monday, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with using our camera to capture views of this and not just using the parallel, but using perspective, all right? So that's just a quick intro on how to use the lighting command, which is again, which is this guy right here and how to use the light properties and how to use the sun. I want you to set up Project North and put your project in somewhere in Philadelphia, even if it's in Seattle or San Francisco. And I'll just stop recording right here.